Hello, my name is Sabuna Isaac Berry, and folks, let us start this with a caution. Air carries sail waves, and water carries water waves, then what carries light waves? The answer was believed to be the imaginary ether. Michelson um, invented something called the interferometer to investigate the imaginary ether. Or I have good news and bad news. Bad news is that when you look in the textbook, it's like 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 this book. It's very hard to understand. But the good news is that, as you see on the wall here, I invented a new map to support Michael Zimbardi's interferometer and Einstein's special theory of relativity. Now let me ask you another question. Does the Earth feel like it's at rest or does it feel like it's moving? Well, of course, in this building, I feel like I'm at rest and the earth is not moving. But imagine this, you are in a car that is moving at 100 kilometers per hour. I'd let us say, with 100 kilometers per hour, I've closed all the, dad's closed all the windows so I don't feel the car moving. But what happens if I open one of the windows? Then, then I put out my hand. Well, my hand experiences wind. That is wind. So, that means the car is moving. If you could stick your hand all the way out of, out of Earth into space, of course, that's not possible. So, Mike Houston invented some sort of machine to do that. Now, let us get on to the mat. Now, here comes our mat for our new derivation. Okay, step one, interferometer. The Michelson Morley experiment. So first, so we have to set up a light. We will we have to set up something like this. So, if you don't know what this, if you don't know what MS is, it is a partially silver mirror. Anything that lands on, any light source that lands on the silver part gets split into two. Okay, so we set up the whole experiment and it's, re and it's ready to go. So the light source goes to the mirror and it lands on the partially silvered part, splitting it into two. Those two have those two light sources, well now they have their own mirrors in front of them, reflecting them back to get get on the regular side, which combines them into the one light source we had before. And and then go to the detector to set it off. And that is the Michelson Woolley experiment. Step two, the boat analogy. Since it, this is very hard to understand, I'll give you a, another glance of it. Imagine a, a boat. So there are the three docks. Dock, dock A, dock B, which is in the top left corner, and dock C, dock C, dock C, which is in the bottom right corner. Now, how, what is the path to get from 
from Dock A to Dock B. One, two, or three. We have to choose one. Also, don't forget about the V or ether. It is going from west to east. But anyways, it's one. Because if we go this way, the V will pull us this way. So we're on Dock B. Now, order to get from Dock B to Dock A, which path do we choose again? One, two, or three. Still one. Because if we go this way, then V will pull us this way. So we will go this way. And that is our boat analogy. Also, don't forget that a is pretending to be a mess, B is pretending to be a one, and C is pretending to be a two. All right. So, this way is downstream. Downstream, and this way, is up and F to M2 is this length and F to M2 is also this length which we will call L2. Step 3 M S to M2 and 2 to MS. So keep in mind that M S to M2 is Downstream and M2 to MS is upstream. Okay! So, so distance is L2 and and the velocity that we find in T2 here is, is, well, C plus because you're going upstream. So the V or the ether fastens you up. Like the gravitational push we got from Jupiter when we pass. But M2 to MS changes the velocity. D is still L2 because the, because the length is the same. But look out! Look out! V is C minus V because you're going upstream, not downstream. You, so the ether will slow you down eventually. Also, we are using G because that's the top speed you can go. Okay, now let's let's see what T two is. So with all our information, T two D S it is. L2 over C plus V and T2, T2 US is, is, is L2 over C minus V. Now, T2 DS plus T2 US is L2 over C plus V plus L2 over C minus V. We have to multiply this fraction by C minus V and this one by C plus V in order to get a common denominator. So that will be L2 C minus V plus L2 C plus V over C plus V, C minus V. Okay, now we distribute everything. Literally, everything. <clears throat> okay, that will make L to C minus L to V plus L2C plus L2V 
over c squared minus v squared. Now you obviously know that L2 V L2 minus L2 V cancel. So that leaves us with 2 L2 C over C squared minus V squared. But now that leads to taking Barney. What do we do now? Well, we have to factor out C squared from the bottom. So that is 2 L2 C over c squared, 1 minus v squared over c squared. Because, you know, we don't know what, <laughs> we will reveal v, v and c much further in, in this interferometer. <laughs> so, c equals to c squared, c times. So, t, so t2, is 2 out 2 over c 1 minus v squared over c squared. Now we are on step number 4. Okay, step 4. Okay, so M, M, I tap M1 is M1 and as you can see here and here. But also, if you haven't noticed, the, the concept of upstream and downstream is thrown away to the garbage heap because the upstream and downstream deal with the horizontal line, or x, while, while we we're focusing with t1, the deal with the vertical line, or y. So the downstream and upstream concept is crossed out today. T1, T1 is L1 over, we, do, we know D, D is L1, and we know V is V naught, but what is V naught? This is a, this is where we started from, in the bone analogy. And that's right, we were trying to go this way, and twist one. So let's put a, then there, and let's call it C, because that was our velocity. And then, V was going this way. So, let's, let's make this line and name it V. That leaves this line, this remaining line, called V naught. A squared plus B squared is C squared, right? But we don't need that. We need B. B. So B squared is C squared minus A squared. That means V not squared is C squared because the hypotenuse is C minus V squared. So V not must be the root v not squared, or to go further, the root of c squared minus v squared. Okay, so now we have found out the way, that way. Okay, don't get triggered. Okay, so l1 over the root of c squared minus v squared. So now we must find we must find the real T1. Okay, so 2T1 or T1 plus T1 is L1 over the root of C squared minus V squared <coughs> plus L1 over the root of C squared minus V squared. You might know that is that is 2L1 over the root of C squared minus V squared. But now you will ask again, Barry, what do we do now? Well, see this root? We can still factor it inside the root, but we'll have to split root. You know what I mean, you know what I mean. So 2L1 over the root of C squared, 1 minus V squared over C squared. And then they have to split root. 
You know what I mean, okay? Okay? So two out of one over the root of c squared and the root of one minus c squared over c squared. Square root can't. Oh, gee, square and root make square root, so they really do cancel. Whoa, whoa, oh, whoa, whoa. Two out one over c times the root of one minus c squared over c. is equivalent to L2 and L2 is equivalent to L. Since, since L1 was equivalent to L2 and L2 is equivalent to L, that means L1 was also, is also equivalent to L because L1 was equivalent to L2 and L2 was equivalent to L. So that means L1 must be equivalent to L2. L. So that means the L1 and L2 got to replaced with L. So now, T1 is equal to 2L over C times the root of 1 minus C squared over C Man, I'm saying root too many times. You might get it confused. And I already said, you might get it confused with the root of a tree. Ha! <laughs> and T2 is now 2L. 2L over C, 1 minus 3 squared over C squared. And now, 